Hi and welcome or welcome back to Booktube with Amy. Today is going to be a review of The Corset by Laura Purcell. So I originally was filming a bit of a shelf destruct vlog um, where I was going to read this and a couple of other books from my shelf destruct challenge but um, Bimbo here filmed vlog footage or like a few days and didn't have the mic turned on. So no audio which was absolutely stellar. Um, so it's not a vlog anymore so I'm just going to do a standalone review of this and then the rest of the books I will include in my wrap up. Um, Laura Purcell, this was like a bit of a second chance read for me. I read The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. I buddy read that um, last year with Becca over at Read Becca who is the best human ever so go subscribe if you're new already. I'll link her channel down below. But um, it was a bit of a mixed experience and I had this one on my shelf. I got it in a My Chronicle book box and um, I've just not really ever gravitated towards it. it. Didn't sound like it was going to be a me book so it ended up on my shelf destruct challenge this year and I finally got around to giving it a chance. So this book centres two female main characters and the story we get it for both of their perspectives and we get it for a chapter each and it switches. So we have Ruth and Ruth is from um, quite humble beginnings we shall say. Her mum and dad don't have the best house, they don't have a lot of money from a poorer background in Victorian England and she is currently in jail being accused of murder and she's been accused of murdering her mistress over a period of time, suspected poisoning. And we then have Dorothea, who is quite a, a well-off lady, very rich, and she is going to prison to visit female prisoners, to try and befriend them and help support them, as well as doing some side research um, and basically their final days before they are executed. And so she meets Ruth and the two of them form a bit of an unlikely friendship. Dorothea becomes quite consumed by Ruth and really wants to know everything that's going on, why she did what she did, if she did what she did and really wants to make her a case study for her research. And so, aye, that's basically the story. <laughs> I'm going to go into spoiler territory about this book because I can't really talk about what I enjoyed and what I didn't enjoy about it without spoiling it. So if you think that this is a book that you would be interested in, then click away now. Um, because I, I really just need to get spoilery right for the get-go. So I want to talk about um, Ruth first and her sort of storyline and how I find her as a character. I really did enjoy Ruth. She was definitely the standout character to me and I far preferred her chapters to Dorothea's chapters. Ruth is really interesting because we really get to know her very emotionally as a character. She is bullied for a child, she doesn't have an easy upbringing and so you really do get like a lot of empathy for her for, her for the get-go. She then starts to believe that she has magical powers. She is an excellent seamstress and she has chosen to like hand embroider, um, stitching onto gloves, onto gowns, corsets, everything for like brides and the wealthier in society and her mum really uses her to try and help her get more money for the household so she pulls her out of school when she is just 16, really really young and basically tells her like sorry but you're not going to get an education, I'm going to need you to pick up some work because I'm pregnant again. There's a few things that happen um, before Ruth believes that she has this power but um, her mum has a, a very very traumatic home birth and Ruth's dad needs to, this is going to be graphic, Ruth's dad essentially needs to like cut her mum open because the baby gets stuck and the baby's stuck inside her um, for quite a few hours. I'm surprised that either of them lasted that long so her dad needs to cut her to get the baby out and then he demands that Ruth sews her back up um, to make sure that she is alright. And obviously with it being quite a traumatic birth, her mum um, really needs quite a lot of rest like so that she can recover and you know doesn't get an infection or anything like that and so she's pretty bed bound for the first few while after the birth and so Ruth picks up a lot of the mothering of the baby and um, 
unfortunately our baby sister does pass away and um, it sort of left a wee bit of dubiety about whether Ruth killed the baby or whether like the baby died of a cot bath and Ruth just believed that she had killed this baby because she believes she has this magical powerful sewing ability because she had sewed um, a particular insignia on the baby's blanket and um, she sewed a wee angel and she, she thought like well an angels came and took my baby sister so um, that happens which then just leads Ruth's life to take a even more downward spiral um, you know her relationship between her mum and her dad just is, is non-existent their relationship fully breaks down and she's sort of stuck in the crossfire of this you know her dad doesn't really work her mum's not able to work as much so she's not really bringing in an income you know they don't have any food they don't have a lot of light they don't have a lot of heat so her mum's health is really deteriorating also her dad ultimately kills himself and then her mum sells Ruth to the seamstress that her and her mum used to do the work for because she can just no longer afford to keep her or keep the house running so she sells her for quite a sizable sum so that she can live out the rest of her days in comfort and Ruth is obviously left with this seamstress to, to crack on and she doesn't then have an easy life for there either and there's quite a lot that happens I'm not going to go into every single plot point with Ruth but ultimately we end with her being in jail and in jail she comes to the realisation that she maybe doesn't have this power and you know it wasn't her fault that these people died so it allows her to let go of a lot of guilt and um, just a lot of bad feelings she was holding for herself obviously believing she was a mad murderer and um, it's sort of nice to see that side of her in the end but then like the last few pages of the book actually leads us to believe she might have these powers yeah, so it was a wee bit dubious then we've got Dorothea and I didn't connect to Dorothea as much as a character although there was some interest in social commentary on Dorothea's side of things as well but I want to do a, a full section on the social commentary of the book so Dorothea's mum passed away and um, she currently lives with her dad who's working really hard to get her married off as well as him finding someone to remarry as well he basically was poor and all of the money came for Dorothea's mum and so he feels like to cement their place in society he really needs to marry well again as does Dorothea so it has all the usual societal pressures of marriage in the Victorian times but um, he views Dorothea's choice to be a Catholic as a bit of a mental illness because he's a Protestant and her mum converted to being a Catholic when she was quite unwell and so he feels like being a Catholic is basically a mental illness um, and he really struggles to understand why Dorothea wants to visit the jails, why Dorothea wants to like read and write and um, do her scientific research and why any it matters. He's like, just live a good life, be a wife, like know your station. And at every turn she's like, I absolutely will not, would never be me. Um, and so like there's a lot of feminist themes through Dorothea's chapters, but um, I just never really connected to her as a character so they probably didn't have the same impact on me as they maybe would other readers who really did connect to her. Um, there's a lot of dubiety in Dorothea's storyline also as to whether or not her dad poisoned her mum and whether or not her dad is currently trying to poison her. But ultimately in the end her dad dies and Ruth may or may not have killed her dad. Um, so one of the running themes that I have says through both the characters storyline here is dubiety and this is something that I just really don't enjoy in a novel I don't like when things are unfinished or when I'm left with unanswered questions I don't like open-ended books like I want to know that's why I'm reading like if I didn't want to know a story I'd just use my imagination and I'd think things up myself but like I want a complete story and I just really wasn't getting that with this book so it left me really quite disappointed um, you know I am left to quite a lot of questions was Dorothea being poisoned did her dad poison her mum is Ruth magic or not like it's just not clear enough for me and this is the same issue that I had with the Silent Companions as well as I feel like the pace of the book was just completely off this started excellently and like for the first 
maybe a quarter of the book, I was loving it. Really, really enjoyed it. Was really loving Ruth. Dorothy, I know so much, but I still cared. And I was enjoying the pacing. It was quite fast paced. We were learning quite a lot. Um, I was really enjoying like the descriptions of the, the bleak environment because it was giving me enough to understand the conditions of the time without it being overbearing because I really don't like overly descriptive writing and I feel like I preferred this over the silent companions in that regard. It was less descriptive. However, it then just hit a massive slump and, you know, pretty much no a lot happens for <laughs> the next two quarters of the book. And then the last quarter it picked up again and we were getting things happening, but then it was all wrapped up so quickly that I didn't get all the answers that I needed. And I just really didn't enjoy that element of it. It really did let the book down massively for me to be completely and utterly honest. One of the things that I did enjoy in this book was the social commentary. So I feel like there are two main threads of social commentary and the first one is to do with female medicine. So in both storylines we touch on this. Um, for this storyline we touch on the fact that her mum had this really traumatic birth that really does affect Ruth heavily and no wonder. Um, she needs to witness her mum giving birth at home with no medication, no doctor because they couldn't afford that and her dad no even really having a clue what to do. It's not like now where if I was to give birth in the house Simon could just phone an ambulance. Like her dad was having to birth this kid and he just didn't have a clue and they had arranged for a couple of women for the church to come over to help but like she gave birth in the middle of the night so he couldn't go and wake them up and he just didn't have a clue what was happening. Like you should but all right um and then he sort of left Ruth to deal with it because Ruth was a woman even though like she's 16 <laughs> like in fact she was maybe younger at this point I think she was maybe only 15 at this point so like as if she's gonna know how to help her mum birth a kid like she's no a clue and you know she's left with the important role of trying to sew her mum up and make sure that her mum's going to recover as well as then also having to take on that mother motherly role for her wee sister um and so there was that element of it and just how horrific and traumatic it must have been f to give birth in those days. But then there was also a lot of talk on Dorothea's part around the science of women and the science of women killers. And she sort of had this theory that if you are a murderer, um, specifically a, a female murderer, I'm unsure of views on male murderers, but um, she thought there was like a bit of your brain that would grow bigger than the rest, like which would then lead to like a hormonal imbalance. And so you would need to behave in a way that it would trigger one of the other points of your brain to like counteract that, um, which was quite a, a clever thought. For the time, at least, um, obviously nonsense, but um, she felt like there must have been a scientific reason as to why people killed. And there's all this misinformation about like the brain and the human body and how things work. And she's like in here measuring Ruth's skull to see if there's a bit of her brain that's bigger. And I just thought that that was really interesting because there is so little research done into women's health a lot of the time and so like we've got all the talk about like the you know female health care and then we've got all the talk of the like the female mental health care in here and I just thought it was really really interesting because you know they're talking about not having enough research and there not being enough doctors and people who are educated in this stuff and like they're still really isn't they, the day like you know there's no enough research into miscarriages and why that happens. There's no enough research into menopause and how one thing will work for somebody and no somebody else and why everybody's symptoms are so different. Um, you know, you go to a doctor about menopause and they're just like, try this because it might work. It worked for so and so, but it might not work for you. If no, we'll try this. If no, don't know what to do. And there's no really any help or any proper support in place for these women who the traditional methods in menopause support don't help. Um, you know, there's not enough research or help put into conditions like endometriosis and polycystic ovaries and stuff that really do heavily affect women. You know, why are everybody's periods so vastly different? Like, there's just so much that we don't know. And so I thought it was interesting that Laura Purcell was sort of making that point. Um, 
and obviously like talking so heavily about the hormones and all this stuff would actually affect women's hormones and so I thought that that was quite funny and quite interesting because like it's exactly the same now like obviously it's not as bad like we're only having to give birth at home and stuff like that and like sew ourselves up but like it's still pretty bad and so the state of affairs haven't changed that much for women's health for the Victorian times which is poor and then the other theme of social commentary I really enjoyed was around the religion in here and how like religions can be so non accepting each other because obviously their beliefs are their beliefs and anybody else is wrong and so it was interesting that like Dorothea's dad was so strict in his belief that he was right and that Dorothea was actually just a bit mentally ill because she had a different belief and like that's obviously quite a polarising view and like quite a dramatic stance but um, it was interesting to see that play out and he like totally believed he was right, he was a Protestant, so like his God was the right God and his beliefs were the right beliefs, but he'd done absolutely nothing to help another person and you know, was like well I go to church and I believe so that's enough, whereas Dorothea was like really alive in her faith and really wanted to help these people and to help them get to God ultimately and she felt like that was how God had called her to serve and like she was a Catholic and she believed her beliefs was right and so it was interesting their like standoff and how different um, their like actions based on their faith were and why they believed they were right and the other was wrong and so I, I just really enjoyed that and I thought that, that was quite funny um, and probably quite representative of a lot of people in churches today because obviously I am the very religious so like I, I am the at church every Sunday you know, um, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God but there are certainly people who will either try to like really help and support you and do that in the name of God or there's people who just think well I believe so everybody else is shit and gay loads of other people hate and almost take like a, a moral standpoint because they believe they are right and therefore everybody else is scum uh, and so I thought that that was interesting for that to be played out as well when again still very prevalent today. Overall I rated this a, a three star because I did really really enjoy the beginning and I did enjoy Ruth's storyline however I wouldn't pick up for Laura Purcell in the future. I just don't think she's an author for me. It's two books I've tried and and both of the books I've had an issue with the pacing and with the plot being wrapped up too conveniently and them being a bit slow. I just don't think her writing is for me. Um, so I'm going to give this copy away. Um, if you would be interested in it, please let me know. It is a signed edition. I got this in a book box, so I didn't want to just chip it to the charity shop if I could gift it to somebody who would really like it so if you are interested in this book and you would like me to send this to you let me know down below it will just be first come first served if you have maybe read this book already and you would like a signed edition again let me know down below and I will send it to somebody because it is really lovely it's a naked hardback it's signed you know if nobody wants it I will just punt it to a charity shop and somebody will have a good time there but um, I'd rather gift it to someone if you would like it. Thank you very much for watching, hopefully you're enjoying everything that you're reading at the moment. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!